today I'm going to show you how to design a dial pin. This is going to be a multi-part video. First off, we're going to apply numerical integration to get a sh our shear bending moment diagrams for this scenario right here. Um, the inputs we're going to use are specifically these right here. Uh, the diameter of the pin being 0.1875 and then some arbitrary forces in the X and Y plane. Um, in this case 200 pounds force and 80, 80 pounds force. And then a thickness right here T1 and a thickness T2 and then a gap between those two. And so we're going to evaluate the short side because that's going to be where the worst case forces, bending moments are, will be and bearing loads. So we go down here and what we do first is we determine our equivalent shear load. So this is just going to be using Pythagorean theorem using our 280 pounds force, our components there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply our free body diagram as shown here to the right to determine our reaction moment and reaction force using our beam and socket analysis and we're just using these equations right here the distance between the mid spans and then finding an equivalent moment or reaction moment and then our reaction force is going to be equal to our resultant shear load that we calculated above the next step we want to do is we want to calculate our boundary conditions. So we're going to evaluate the short side. So we're going to make a cut at x equals zero along our shear plane and then we apply the equilibrium equations to determine our shear force at x equals zero and bending moment at x equals zero. So we do that with these equations to the left and we're only evaluating one side in this scenario, the shorter side, so we use this equation right here, which is going to use the length T2, the longer side, to calculate our reaction, our moment at x equals zero. If we flip this around and evaluate the long side, we would use this equation up here. So you can see we get a higher bending moment here for um, our sh using our analyzing our shorter side. So after we've done that, we can go ahead and put our thickness up here, our reaction force, our reaction moment, and also our moment at x equals zero using our method of sections, which we just calculated. And then we want to develop shear and bending moment diagrams and bearing diagrams. So what we do first is we specify our step size. So our length here of the member we're evaluating is 0.1575. We go ahead and just space it out and we cover that distance using a specific step size. In this case I'm using 55 segments. The next step we want to do is calculate our bearing. So if you recall our bearing load right here is going to be equal to from our reaction force is going to be uniform and equal to our load over our thickness and then our bending moment right here looks like this distribution so we'll go ahead and calculate that using these equations so it's going to be our force I don't want to freeze that divided by our thickness that's our line load caused by our reaction force and that's going to be the same all the way through the thickness along the thickness of the dowel pin or member and then we're going to use this equation to calculate our line load from our moment so it's going to be negative 12 times a reaction moment and you want to freeze that divided by There's thickness cubed and then we're going to add we're going to multiply that by x and then we're going to sub, we're going to add 6 times 
our reaction moments divided by our thickness squared. And you're going to want to freeze the thicknesses and the constants here. Freeze everything except X. And it's going to correct it for me. It goes all the way down. Next step we're going to do is we're going to add these together using superposition. Carry that all the way down. And then we plot that and this is our bearing load distribution along our short side, our shorter joint. So the next thing we want to do is develop our shear force diagrams. We simply do that just by applying integration and then adding our boundary condition in there. So we're going to start off at x equals 0. Our boundary condition is equal to what we determined right here. 215 and then what we're going to do is we're going to just apply the trapezoidal rule. The trapezoidal rule is given right here. It's just our step length multiplied by basically two data points divided by two. In this case it's going to be our bearing load. That's what we're going to use. So it's going to be equal to our step length, so B minus A multiplied by FA, which is our first value, plus FB, which is going to be our second value, divided by 2, and then we add the previous value. and we step it all the way down. And I forgot to add the negative here because we're taking the negative integral. So we step that all the way down. And we end up getting, we plot this and we end up giving a parabola distribution and you can see here um, we start at our boundary condition and we go all the way through and we end up at zero at the end which um, is what we expect it to be. We want it to end at zero. So now we want to determine our bending moment diagram so once again we apply our boundary condition at x equals zero. In this case it's going to be this value which we determine from our method of sections. And then we simply integrate our shear force values or distribution as shown right here using the trapezoidal rule. And we'll go ahead and do that. So it's our step length B minus A multiplied by the average of our shear force values and then we add the previous value and we carry that all the way down and then we plot it. I already had these graphs pre-plotted for us and you can see this is our bending moment distribution and it ends up at zero. We have a little bit of error because of numerical integration. So I hope you learned something and in the next video we'll go ahead and calculate our margins of safety. Show how to do that for bearing in our dowel pin and shear pull out. So I'll see you next time. Adios.